Hey, what's up? My name is Norris and welcome back to another saw along. Now today we're going to be working on my latest Nomi pattern design, which is ME2061. And today we'll be working on view A, which is the short puffer jacket. Now, if you're new to sewing, I just want to brush up on your skills. I would highly recommend you sign up for sewedacademy.com and take advantage of our free trial. Now, once you gather all your materials, we can begin sewing. Okay. So once again, like I said, we'll be working on my latest Nomi pattern design, which is ME2061. And today we'll be working on view A, which is the shorter version of the two. Now, view B is the longer version, but there's basically no difference. It's one's just longer than the other. And if you turn to the back, you can look and see fabric suggestions. You'll need batting, you'll need inner lining, you'll need lining, and you'll need a 28 inch zipper. Also, you'll need 3 fourths of an inch wide Velcro, um, 6 inches for view A, which is the one I'm doing, and then 9 inches of that for view B, which is the longer one. Now you can get a zipper that's longer than 28 inches, but I wouldn't suggest that you get anything shorter than that because you will need to adjust it to the correct length, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. And um, most importantly, you wanna look at your finish guard measurements just to see what that fit is gonna look like. Now this is a jacket or overcoat. You do want it to have room and ease. So this shouldn't be like a tapered jacket or anything like that. So just want you to keep that in mind when it comes to fit. Okay, so before I get started, I just want to show you uh, some adjustments that I made because I am making this particular one for my wife and she wanted to make it a little shorter. So I started at the stitching line. If I open it up, there's a stitching line right here. Now this line right here is a guide for when we start um, quilting the batting onto the fabric and the inner lining. So I use that as a reference to adjust it. So I brought it up, I think like two inches. And as you can see, the pattern is folded. So I'm only doing this because if this jacket is a little bit too longer for you and you still want to do some type of adjustments to it, this is how you would do it. If you don't need any adjustments, you can skip ahead to the actual order of construction. But if you did want to make it shorter, this is basically how I did it. Um, so once you do that, you want to make sure you make the same type of adjustments to the back. So I matched them up at the underarm, as you can see right here, to make sure that they are equal. And if I make adjustments to this, you want to also make adjustments to your flap and your underlap. Okay. So once I made the adjustments, you still need a stitching line, okay? So since I moved my stitching line, I went to my sleeve and I basically matched up the edge of my sleeve right here to where it would naturally be once I start um, putting it together. And you see this stitching line right here on the sleeve. So I basically took that and I matched it up across here. Okay. So you really can't see the line, but the line is here. So once I made it here, I made the same line here. So this is going to be my new stitching line for, um, this project. And also my wife wanted to shorten the sleeves up. So I shortened the sleeves. I could have cut the paper, but I might want to use the same one again, so I'm keeping it intact. And then if you wanted to make it a little longer, slash and spread it and then put paper in the center. And last but not least, because we made adjustments to the front, we have to make adjustments to our flap. So I measured the room that I took up, which was two inches. So you can just do two inches divided by three, and it don't have to be um, a round number, you can get it as close as you can, as close as possible. And then whatever that number is, you want to take up the spaces, one, two, and three, in between the Velcro pieces, okay? Because your Velcro pieces will be a little bit different because I brought this up. So the bottom, you want to line up perfectly, and then the second one to the bottom, and then the second one from the top, you can just fill in and mark where that new position is, okay? Other than that, that's basically it. Hopefully you don't have to make any of these adjustments and just cut it out and start sewing it. And last but not least, the underlap has to be the same exact size as the flap. So 
you can just start in the center and take in space until you get it that exact same length and basically that's it this right here has to be the exact same size for the construction to actually work okay so that's how you make a quick adjustment just for sizing if you want to make it shorter or if you want to make it longer and that goes for the front the back the flap the underlap and also the sleeve okay just some very helpful tips before we actually start the order of construction um, this particular project is not just lining and fabric we have three different types of fabric that we'll be working with um, the fabric well this is actually my lining this is my inner lining and then this right here is my actual fabric now this is a ribstock nylon waterproof sort of um, fabric so this is going to be my outside fabric this shiny one right here more of a satin is going to be my lining and then this cotton here is going to be my inner lining now the inner lining is what's going to sandwich your batting which is this right here so that's going to go in between your fabric and also your inner lining so your inner line is what you're going to use to hold that together and then the lining is what you was what we're going to use to hide all of the inside so you won't see any of the quilting lines or any of the pocket bags from the welt pockets in the front to make it look real nice and neat and fully lined on the inside okay so it's um so it's three um uh, three fabrics we're working with and a layer of the batting so the batting is going to be very important because there are three pieces that we're not going to use the same thickness of batting so it's going to be the welt your collar and your flap okay so your flap is going to fold and it's going to be double the thickness your collar is going to fold and be double the thickness and your welt is going to fold and become double the thickness so one of my batting as you can see it's about an inch thick now this is what I'm going to use for my sleeve my front and my back just so it can have that nice puffy puffer look and the thinner one I'm going to use for these three because they fold so once I fold the thinner one it becomes the same thickness so you can have the same continued thickness throughout your entire jacket you don't want to have you don't want to have these three pieces cut all your thick one and then once you fold it now is even thicker than your sleeve and your front and your back pieces okay so those are just some tips that i've um, noticed that would be helpful in the order construction for this particular project also i will be using clamps you know, if you work with leather before these come in very very helpful you don't have to pin them you can just clamp it on and get to work now that we understand all of this, let me grab one of my quilting pieces and I'm going to show you how to get all that done. Um, but before that, um, as, you, as you can see, I have my inner lining on the bottom, my fabric on top, and my batting in the center. And you just want to stitch around the edge, about a quarter inch away from the edge. Um, but just baste it in place just so these can be already prepped and in place. Okay, so this right here is my sleeve. Um, I've quilted it almost all the way I have one more quilting strip right here that I'll show you on actual camera um, but basically the instructions are going to show you and tell you to baste around the edges first and then do your strips there's only one problem with that once you baste all the way around and you start quilting if your fabric slides at all just a little bit even if you have it pinned it's going to bunch up in the corner because it don't have room to move okay so what I like to do first is I do my quilting first okay so I basically use my clamps and hold it together around the pattern piece and then I do a couple rows at the top and then you want to turn it and then start doing your quilting rows at the bottom okay so the problem is if you just start quilting all the way down because of the thickness of the batting it's going to take a little bit of your fabric 
and your fabric and your fabric inner lining is going to be shorter than your actual batting. And that's gonna make your sleeve shorter than what you want it. So if you start quilting here and then skip ahead and then go here, making sure that the batting and both fabrics is all lined up at the bottom and then do your quilting, it, it has no other place to move and then you can do your quilting lines in the middle, okay? Now that's a really good tip because it happened to me and basically I had to figure it out. So that's the best way to prep all of your um, pattern pieces. So let's go ahead and head to the machine and I'm just gonna show you how I just guide this through and just quilt all the way through. Okay, so when it comes to quilting, uh, obviously, number one, you wanna get you a quilting needle or get you something that can go through and not give you skip stitches. And then second, you want to take your tension and um, depending on how thick your batting is, you can take turn your tension all the way off or you can just turn it down to a very low number. Now, the higher the tension, the more it's gonna pull and if you can see your bobbin on the top, pulling the top, your, your top thread, you want to take the tension off so it can loosen it up and go through all the thick layers, okay? So I got my um, stitching down and I got a nice quilting needle. And also, if you don't have a quilting needle, you can just, you can just switch out and like practice on, on a couple of layers that's not your pattern pieces just to see how it would work. Um, and don't forget to take your tension down. And last but not least, you want to lengthen the length of your stitch. Usually people do 2.5 um, on average, um, but for this, I like to do at least no less than three, okay? Three millimeters. So once you get up under there, you have all your markings, and I use a chalk pencil something very light so once I start stitching you won't see it. I uh, just started from the wrong side so let me let me switch I almost messed up. So I'm starting with the side that's based on the end just to show you because I'm stitching towards the end that's not base which is why I told you it's it's better to do your quilting first than base around your edges first. Okay, so you want to keep your fabric stretched out and just guide it across. So you can see this side right here is free. So if this was already based, all this extra fabric will bunch up and you don't want any of this on your fabric. So because it's free, it has the free range to stretch all the way out. Okay. So I'm just okay. And then once you do all of your stitches like that, all your quilting, then you can go and then finish up all your edge stitching around the side. I've already done this right here just because of the purpose of this video, but I would have done all of this after doing all of my um, quilting stitches. So go ahead and do all of your um, basing stitch around all your pattern pieces, and we will meet you back at the table. Okay, so let's start the order of construction. So at this point, I will assume that everyone went ahead and took time to prep. So you should have all your pieces quilted, the, well, the ones that need to be quilted, and then all of them um, based around the edges just to be intact. The same with the welt, okay? So this right here is the fabric. This right here is my inner lining. So just so you get a good understanding of what I'm working with. So this right basically is the right side. So we're right sides facing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this onto itself. And when I do that, you wanna make sure that this corner here, when you fold, it's not bunched up at the end. You wanna make sure that everything is sitting flat, okay? So you wanna make sure that that's sitting flat. Go ahead and 
hold that in place with the clamps. Okay, so now we're going to head to the machine and you want to stitch down both sides so using your seam allowance, which is 5 8 of an inch. Okay, so do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back and I'm just going to trim down that seam allowance about a quarter of an inch. And then once I get to that corner, I just want to go in just a little bit. Then next, we're going to turn it right side out. And now once you get it like this, go ahead and give it a good basing stitch. Now you want to base it the same as the seam allowance. So 5 eighths of an inch, just give it a really good base and come back and we'll continue. Okay, so moving right along, we're going to take our pocket lining. Now we have two different ones. I use the one that goes on the back, the same as the fabric. So this one, it'll be like this on the inside. So when I refer to the lining, I'm referring to this one right here. Okay, so I've already marked right here on the wrong side that um, stitching line, 5 eighths of an inch. So what we're going to do, we're going to be lining up that stitching line right here where I got marked out with the stitching line, the basing stitch that we have pre-existing right here that we just did at the machine that's 5 eighths of an inch away from the edge here. Okay, so we're just going to base these together. So the welt, the ends of the welt should fit in between the two dots that's on the lining. So you just want to get that in a good place. Now, whenever we start working with um, batting, um, your fabric might puff and shrink a little bit and it might just be the smallest of an eighth of an inch. So if the dots if you have room in between your dots, even when you line it up, it's perfectly okay. Okay, so you just wanna make sure that both sides are even. Now, I don't normally pin when it comes to working with batting, but this is a really good way to keep this in place. So I'm going to put my needle right in between there, and it should come out on the other end where our stitching is. Okay, so you see where that needle is right there, right in the middle of that stitching. And then now I'm just going to do this all the way down, making sure that we're keeping it in the same exact place. Okay, so now let's head to the machine and we're just going to stitch from dot to dot using a basing stitch just to keep these together. Okay, like once again, we're just going to base everything that's lined up in place. Take your time and be as accurate as you can when it comes to that needle placement. Okay, so we're back from the machine. And we, As you can see right here, we stitch basically from dot to dot. And on the bottom, we have our welt upside down. And you can see that the pocket lining is on top with that base across. Now this right here is gonna be our stitching guide for placement onto our front. So I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me get an angle. Maybe you can see it a little bit. It's a little, we have, I have a marking right here, very light. So marking from there to there. Now we want to align it. So once again, I'm going to grab a couple of pins and I'm going to make sure that this stitching line is on the bottom row, okay? So you have a top row of the binding box and you have a bottom row. You only want to put it on the bottom row first, okay? and then we're gonna trim off some of the top after we stitch. So let's go ahead and pin. So just head back over to the machine and you want to follow your basing stitch. You don't wanna stitch down the ends because we don't have the welt there. You just wanna start with that, where, where the stitching is now. So we backstitch on at one dot 
and go all the way to the other dot, okay? So do that, come back, and we'll continue. Okay, we're back from the machine. As you can see, we have it stitched down. And then if you pull it back, you can see how accurate it is. Now, this right here was one of the most important steps for this welt pocket because you want to make it as accurate as possible. So now let's go ahead and fold this like this, pull that back, and we're gonna do a little trimming, straighten out that lining. So we're gonna trim this down to, we're gonna trim that seam allowance down to a quarter inch without cutting, don't cut anything on your front pieces, okay? So we just taking this bit right here that's sticking up and we're gonna trim that down to a quarter inch. And folding it like this is the best way to cut it without damaging anything else. Okay, so now it's trimmed down and then I'm gonna, well, I guess I keep it just like this for right now. So on the wrong side, as you can see, I have the marking, the binding box marking on this other piece. Let me see if you can see it. You see that a little bit better. And so this is the binding box right side up. So there's a row at the top and a row at the bottom. So that very row at the top, once I turn it upside down, is gonna be on the bottom, okay? So we're gonna take that row and we're gonna line it up to the top binding box on our front piece, okay? So we should be able to match up our dots and then we're going to pin everything in place. Okay, so as you can see, we have our top lining right here, our top pocket lining right here, and we're just going to go ahead and we're not basting, we're actually stitching from dot to dot. Okay, so just a quick tip, I went ahead and justified my needle over to the left a little bit because of this bulkiness right here, just so I can get closer to my presser foot and my presser foot could come closer to the right and I don't have that bulging up against the left side, okay? And um, you would do it the opposite way with the other one. So I got my needle in that dot and we're just going to stitch from dot to dot. Now I like to stop just right before I get to that dot, maybe like maybe a stitch before, just because we need to have that stitch out the way when we flip that whelp up. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, this one right here went across perfect. All this is in place. So let's go ahead and move back the rest of the top, we're not trimming this at all, so please do not trim the top, okay? So we're just going to fold it in half, okay? And right on the, in the center, we're just gonna clip. Okay, that's just in the center of the binding box, okay? And then now what we're going to do, we're going to until we get about five eighths of an inch away from the side. Now, before we cut diagonally in one direction, then to the other direction, we're supposed to be going to our markings. But because no one is perfect, sometimes it's not always ideal to be exactly on the dot, right? So if you cut to the dot, but you're not at the dot, that's how you get a wonky um, welt. So what you need to do is cut to where your stitching stops. So I'm going to look, see what my stitching is, and I'm going to cut right to 
my stitching. And then the same thing on this side. And it said, if it happens to be right where your dot is, well, bravo to you. And you got them all in the same place. And then now we're gonna do the other side the same exact way. Okay, so you know you did it right when you have a triangle on both sides. See the little cutout? Okay, now we're just going to hit, flip this down, the top down, and making sure that the seam allowance is still facing towards the center. Don't flip it up yet. We're going to do some understitching. So we're gonna start at one corner and then stitch on the lining side, but very close to that seam, okay? Into this corner right here. Now, if you um, move your stitching out the middle or wherever you usually do it, you wanna place it back where it was. And as you can see, I'm just stitching on this side of the seam all the way to the other corner. Okay, just like that. So while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and just flip this to the inside real quick, leaving this one out to the outside. And we're just basically gonna top stitch the seam allowance up. So once, so on the back side, it'll look like this. You just want to straighten that out. I find a way to keep it in place. It's a little difficult on camera. It might be sort of easier to pin it in place. And I'm doing this now because you won't be able to see it once the welt go up. You can skip this step if you want to. It's not 100% necessary, but it does help keep that seam allowance up. Just like this. Okay, so we're back from the machine. And now let's go ahead and tuck the rest of this to the inside. And you can see the welt is slowly starting to form. Now on this side, you just want to make sure you have those triangles sticking out on both sides like this. There should be a notch in the center. You want to even that up, so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of clips in place. So I'm clipping it with the pins upside down because I'm going to flip it like this and I'm going to finish it. So I'm going to slide this one side down. So we're going to be catching that triangle with the seam when we start stitching. So if you pay very close attention, we're going to be stitching 5 eighths of an inch starting here. And that 5 eighths of an inch is, will include that triangle. But you want to make sure you move the wheel all the way because you don't want to stitch that down quite yet. So what I like to do, I like to fold it down like this on the side, get it, and then a pin is the perfect thing to like get right there and keep it in place. So we'll be stitching just at the bottom of that triangle right there. And then now we're gonna do the same thing to this side. So as you can see, we're just gonna be st stitching here and going all the way around the bottom of the pocket bag. And then once we get to this side, we're gonna finish up at the other triangle, keeping the welts free. And you can see right now where I have it pinned, it's closing out those sides quite nicely. So let's head to the machine, stitch that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we have it up on the machine. Go ahead and remove this pin because I got my needle down. And we're just going to go right across the bottom of that triangle and continue with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance.
remember to make sure that your welt is not in the way, especially so that it can lay flat. Okay, so we're back from the machine, and this is what the inside of the pocket bag looks like, and this is what the back side of it looks like. All neat, all the corners are closed. And then the last step we have to do with the welt pocket is basically you should have your markings here. Now, if they don't line exact, that's okay. So you wanna make sure you don't have it open like this. You wanna make sure it's from side to side. And we're gonna to head to the machine and we're just basically going to add stitch on both sides. Be sure you have your pocket bag flat on the bottom. Okay, so we're back from the machine. Once again, this is what the back look like. And then the front, we have the welt pocket edge stitched on both corners, on both sides. And then look, we have a fully functioning pocket. And all this right here is gonna be on the inside of the lining. Okay, so let's grab our back piece. We're right sides facing. We're gonna go ahead and attach them to the shoulders and then also the side seam. Grab the clips. There should be a notch. Again, like I said, the side seam. With the side seam, we know we have those quilting lines. You wanna make sure those quilting lines match up. You don't want them to be off. Okay, you want to pin the other side the same exact way and we're going to head to the machine and just go and stitch across your shoulders and then side seam using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we went ahead and closed out our side seam and then also our shoulders. And you can see all the construction on the inside. So now let's go ahead and grab your sleeves. Right sides facing. Just taking one right now. You wanna make sure that you keep all your quilting rolls lined up. So you wanna kinda of treat those sort of like notches. Okay, so just head to the machine, stitch all the way down using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, once you do one, you wanna do the other sleeve the same exact way. Come back and we'll attach it to our jacket. Okay, so we're back from the machine. Went ahead and stitched our sleeves. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the other one right side out. Okay, just like that. You can see all my lines are connected. So let's go ahead and find our notches. So the double notch is for the back. So this will go on this side. So this is how it would be connected. So what we wanna do is open it up to the inside. And then now we can match up our notches. This is automatically right sides facing. Once we do it like this, you should have notches and dots to match up. Be sure to keep that seam open at the shoulder. And also remember to open up that seam allowance on the side seam and also on the, sli on the sleeve and match it up. Okay, and just like this, we're gonna head to the machine and we're gonna stitch all the way around using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so if your machine has a little slide off for your sleeve, you can go ahead and use that. It'd be very helpful. And uh, you just wanna slide it up, up under there. Be careful, take your time. You have to fight with it just a little bit, not too much. 5 eighths of an inch, back stitch at the beginning and also at the end.
Okay, so moving right along, we have both of our sleeves attached. It looks really good. We can see it come together. And then now you want to grab your collar and we're going to attach it to the jacket. Now, if you need to clip into the top up here of your neckline, you can do so if necessary. But if not, you don't have to worry about it. So our collar, as you can see, if you mark your marking, you see we have the Velcro right here. So basically what you wanna do is, you wanna make sure that marking is on your right side. So once you line it up there, you can go ahead and right sides facing. We're just going to clamp it down and we have markings and dots Okay, so now just head to your machine and we're just going to stitch on one side and going all the way across the neckline, attaching the collar to the jacket using 5 8 7 inch seam allowance. Do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back for the machine. As you can see, we went ahead and put our collar on and then also with the markings that we transfer, you want to put your Velcro on as well. You just want to top stitch it on. Um, it says to put the harder version on this side. It really don't even matter, but um, I went ahead and did that. You just basically put it where your markings are and then add stitch all the way around. As you can see right there. And then now we're gonna go ahead and work on our zipper. Okay, so let's go ahead and just align it up. We just need to see where we are and how much I need to take off. So for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the end of the zipper and place it at that large dot, the very first dot, okay? So basically right there, now I'm only doing this just so I can mark it up and adjust it. Want to be as accurate as we can be. Okay, make sure you pull it, stretch it to make sure it's going. The fold line is here. So right at that fold line, you want to measure down a quarter inch. And that's where we're going to be placing the new zipper stop. Okay. Now, I like to do both sides because we place it on the back. And then also I like to do very important places like the seam here. And I'm also marking every quilting line too. I need everything to match up perfect. Okay, that's a little extra work but it's good detail to have. You don't want to zip it up and it'd be crooked. Okay. So I'm just gonna move this for right now. Okay, so this last marking right here, the top with the very first marking right here, is going to be where we need our zipper pull to stop at, basically just like that. Okay, so the tubes I'm using, I'm using a little skinny set of pliers here. You can see, I just call these um, pliers for zipper teeth because it has like a little, a little narrow hinge right there. You clamp down and you can just rip the zipper teeth off. Okay, first thing we have to do is remove our stops right here. So this right here helps to do that too. You just basically take one end and put it right at the bottom and then you take the top and you put it right on top and just give it a little squeeze. Okay. So once you give it a little squeeze, it comes right off. You see that? So you just want to save that. And the shorter end goes in the front. One more time. Okay, so now I need to figure out what's the last 
zipper teeth I need to pull out. So if my marking is right here, we want the stop to be exactly right there. So we need to take off this one and then this one right here and all the ones up. So what you want to do is you want to take this, clamp it down at the tip of the zipper teeth, pull on a little bit, and then they rip right off, as you can see, just like that. Right at the end, again, squeeze just a little bit. Okay, once you've got enough off, you can go ahead and just trim. I have about maybe an inch. Let's see. You know, just a little over an inch above. And then after you do that, you want to go ahead and place your stop right back where that is. And as you can see, that stop is right there where that marking is. And then now I'm going to take these pliers and squeeze and then sometimes I like to put pressure with these okay so that ain't going nowhere okay so I'm gonna do the other one the same exact way Okay, so before I smash it down, make sure that they're both of even. Okay, boom. So it won't come off. And then now this is the new zipper length. So now, Let's continue and apply it to our jacket. Okay, so moving right along, what you want to do, you want to just unzip the zipper. Okay, so the one on, so the one on this side, you want to flip it in the raw edge. It's going to be facing the center front. And what you want to do is you want to line up and the zipper teeth should be right over the seam allowance, okay? So if you take your ruler and you measure five eighths of an inch, so that's how I'm able to identify how far I am. Boom, just like that. Use my clamps. That's how, the more markings you put, the better your outcome. Okay, and then the same thing on this side. You just want to line everything up the same exact way. Okay, now that we have the zipper tape separated and clipped on to both sides of the front, the center front, we're going to go ahead and do a basting stitch starting at the top, but not at the very top, just where the stop is. You want to back stitch and then baste all the way down to the end. So let's head to the machine and do that now. Okay, so now you want to back stitch at the beginning and also at the end. Now you can use a zipper foot, but I just like moving my needle over and using my same foot. All right, now you wanna base the other side the same exact way. Okay, we're back from the machine. I'm just going to go ahead and zip this up real quick just to make sure everything came out good. You always want to double check your work and voila. Everything, boom, 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 boom. Everything lines up. That's how you want it. Okay. So moving right along, I'm going to put this to the side for just a moment. I'm going to work on, we're going to work on our underlap. So this is my right side. And this right here is my backside. Now, there's no batting 
in this one right here, but I did do two um, layers of inner lining just to make it a little bit more sturdy. So we're right sides facing. Let's go ahead and fold them onto themselves just like that. You wanna do five eighths of an inch seam allowance on both ends, come back and we'll continue. Okay, I'm back from the machine. Let me go ahead and trim down the seam allowance. Turn the right side out, poke your corners out. So just like this, where the raw edge is to your left, and this is the fold, we're gonna go back to the machine and we're gonna do our two rows of top stitching. Now in the first row, it's gonna be a half inch from the fold here, and then a second row, a half inch from that first stitch. So do both of your top stitching, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so I went and did my two rows of top stitching, as you can see right there. And then now we're right sides facing, we're going to turn it and we have a double notch that we can line up. And then it should come to the small dot down here at the bottom. Okay. So go ahead and just base this down. And then while you're at the machine, you want to take your flap and you want to put your other half of your Velcro where your markings are, if you transfer all your markings. And then after you do that, we're right sides facing. We're just going to fold at our fold line. So stitch both ends five eighths of an inch and then base down your flap on your right side over your zipper tape, okay? So do all of that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we have our underlap base down onto our right side, which is on the left side here. And then now let's go ahead and trim and turn the flat right side out. Okay. So now let's head to the machine and we're going to do a basing stitch, five eighths of, of an inch away from the raw edge. And then come back and we're going to go ahead and stitch this down onto the left side. Okay, so we're back from the machine. And as you can see, I did a basting stitch right here, five eighths of an inch away. And then on the left side here, I went ahead and marked my placement line for the pocket. And that placement line is, is going to be exactly where my basting stitch is. Okay, so we're just going to align it up. So we need to come down to our marking down here, that second dot. And then for this, I like using pins, keep it exactly in place. So let's go ahead and stitch down following our basing stitch from the top of our placket all the way down to the bottom of our placket using a regular stitch, okay? So go ahead and do that, come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we stitched down the flap on the left side. So before we turn over and then top stitch, we're going to trim a little bit. We're just gonna trim it close to the seam. So I like to turn it like this where the seam allowance well, you only have the seam allowance so you don't cut anything else. So I'm gonna trim this down to at least a quarter inch. Okay, so now that that's trimmed down, we'll go back to the machine, fold this back over the flap, and then we're just going to top stitch quarter inch away from that seam, okay? So go ahead and do that. And while you're at the machine, you wanna go ahead and take your lining pieces. You wanna attach your front and back at the shoulders and also the side seam. And once you stitch your sleeve, you can attach it to your lining. And just so you know, you need to trim off one inch 
from the hem of your sleeve and then also an inch from your front and also your back. And you want to leave an opening on one of your side seams just so we can finish off our sleeves through here. And I'll show you all of that once we get there. But go ahead and put your lining together right after you do your top stitching and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, moving right along. As you can see, we went ahead and did that top stitching. So now we have a clean inside right here. So now what we're gonna do is attach the collar to the lining. So we're right sides facing. We're gonna match up the neckline of the lining to the collar of the jacket. Okay, so head to the machine and just stitch across using 5 8 7 8 seam allowance. Come back and we'll continue. Okay, so we're back from the machine. As you can see, we have the lining attached to the top of the collar. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to come to the hem. I'm just going to turn it upside down so I can attach it better. We're going to attach the lining to the hem of the jacket. Matching up all the seams. Okay, so now we're gonna head to the machine, starting on one side, going all the way down to the other side, using a half inch seam allowance, okay? So pay very close attention to me. A half inch seam allowance, not five eighths, just a half inch seam allowance on the bottom. Okay, we're back from the machine, as you can see, we have that half inch seam allowance down here at the hem. And then now what we're going to do is, we're going to fold at the, fold line on the collar. So right here, you can just turn that extra zipper tape out the way. And then at that fold line, just fold it. And then we're going to pin and we're going to do that all the way down on both sides. So I'm going to turn the seam allowance up, making sure that that meet we have that double notch and before I continue all the way to the bottom we're gonna fold up the hem allowance it should be a dot right there but also you can just feel where the flap or underlap is and that's basically where that seam allowance stops so once you fold that up go ahead and Clip that down too. All right, so now we're just gonna head to the machine. We're gonna start at the top, stitch all the way down where that hem is folded up here, all the way to the bottom. And we're using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And once you do this one, you wanna do the other side the same exact way. Okay, so back from the machine, I have the front stitched on both sides. And then now what I'm going to do is, is turn it right side out. So that opening that we left in one side of the lining, you just want to slowly start bringing it out. Hold on, wait before I do that. Let me go ahead and clip just a little bit of these corners here. Okay, so once you match up the underarm seams, you'll see that the lining a roll up like this okay so now let's go ahead and finish up the sleeves so with the sleeve you want to find the seam on the lining and also the seam on the jacket which is right here and then you just want to turn in that seam allowance, just take it and fold it underneath like this, like where you see two folds. Right here where we have the opening in the side, you just want to go all the way through. And right where you have it pinched, you want to grab it. Okay, right here, as you can see, you see my hands. 
then once we have it secured, keep it together and, and pull it out. So basically it's gonna be right size facing. We can go ahead and clamp it together. Then you wanna do it all the way around. So basically taking it and making it right size facing. Okay, you see how it looks. So now let's head to the machine and we're just going to stitch all the way around, closing it out. Okay, so I have my needle in there and we're just going to stitch all the way around until we close it out. Once again, we're using five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now you want to go inside your lining and pull your other sleeve and stitch it the same exact way. Okay, now that we're back from the machine, go ahead and turn down this seam allowance and hem allowance. Fold it back onto the actual sleeve. And just get you a needle and thread. Just gonna tack it down a few times. Okay, so after you tack it down, you now we could turn it right back in. Okay, now look, you see it's finished on the inside. Since we did one sleeve, you wanna do the other sleeve the same exact way. And then we'll finish up the last few details. Okay, so went ahead and finished both sleeves. They're both finished. And then also I went ahead and I tacked in between both shoulders. I just took a needle and thread and just went through the seams from the lining to the shoulder. And then a little bit here on the seam of the collar, just to tack it in place so it won't move. And you could do that too here up on the underarm just for the lining. And the last couple of things to do, as you see here at the bottom, you want to align your underarm seams with the lining and also with the jacket and then that hem will come up just like this and then on the front side you can just do a top stitch of one inch all the way across the bottom of the hem and then last but not least the opening that we have right here once you have everything pretty much done you can hand stitch that close all right let me zip it up for you one time Zipper nice and clean. All right. And once you do all of that, you're all done. All right, congratulations, you're all done. Now, I hope you enjoyed this course and be sure to tag me on all your amazing mates and I will see you in the next so long.